Jerry, the last one? Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, guys. <coughs> Open up for questions. Anybody? Tony, there's been a lot of a lot of games come down to the last five, six minutes execution. Is that a, a good thing in the sense of learning how to handle that, or is it a bad thing that when you play a five or six minute game, anything can happen? No, it's a good thing because this is it's a competitive sport. I mean, you're fortunate when you can blow somebody out, but that's not going to happen at the level um, that we're playing at in this in this conference, one of the best in the country, if not the best. So you're going to have games that go down to the wire, and then in a season where there's a lot of parity all across the country, and there's not a lot of separation from what might be the top to the bottom, you're going to have a lot of close games. So it's good that we're getting this experience. Um, and we got quite a bit of it in the in the non-conference schedule. And we've learned and we've, we've grown from it. So our young guys are a little more comfortable in those situations when it is a nip and tuck game on this level. What do you think is the biggest thing you've figured out about these guys having been through so many of these at the end? Well, just their one, their will to win, their competitive spirit. We've got, we've got a group that hates to lose. And it doesn't mean you're going to win every game, but these guys are going to battle and scrap and fight. And if you lose a game, it's only because we ran out of time, not because we gave up or stopped stop trying. And that, that makes a special group when you've got talented guys like White, we do that care about winning and losing. How much of an advantage is it, Tony, to have guard, good guards in those kind of situations? Well, it's, it's what college basketball is. Um, you can have some mediocre bigs across your front line, but if you got good guard play, you got a chance. And fortunate for us, we got both. We got good bigs, we got good guards, we got good wings, we got a little bit of everything. And so <clears throat> when you've got the experience, not only good players, you know, especially with the experience that we've got from Ashton and Emmanuel, when you've got that kind of talent and experience, it's hard for a lot of teams to handle. When you come, came into the season, maybe you didn't know who, game on the line, who's the guy? Do you have a guy that wants and can make the big shot? Emmanuel's made a few of them now. Mm -hmm. you know, hadn't, hadn't hit anything the other day and hits the, the big one, uh, ties the game at uh, South Carolina. Do you, do you feel like you found that guy in him? I think we've got a bunch of guys. I think you've got Ashton who wants that shot in the ball. You've got Tyrese that wants that shot in the ball. You've got Emmanuel who wants that shot in the ball. So it becomes hard on the other team to say, all right, we take this guy out late in the game, they're in trouble. You can't do that against us because we've got a plethora of guys who, who want that ball in the last minute situation. Tony, there were a lot of fouls last week in both games. What, what do you think that's about? We did a lot of fouling. <laughs> we did a lot of fouling. I mean, it's something we work on. You know, we, the one thing we try to do is make a very – competitive practice. Coach wants the practices to be harder than the game. You guys have heard it forever. Obviously, I've heard it from him forever. Um, and when you are that competitive, you're fighting their brothers and their teammates, but they're fighting for their opportunities. They're fighting. Our guys are fighting for their livelihoods. And so in practice, it's, it's, it's competitive. And, but the one thing we try to limit is the grabbing, the holding, and the fouling, because that then translates what you do in the practice, what you're going to do in the game. And, and we We've got to be more conscious of what we do with our hands on defense because we get, we're getting our hands on post players, drivers of the basketball too often. It's too easy for officials to see and call. Tony, have you guys at least had as a contingency to use some zone even before you went to it in those mm -hmm. last eight minutes? I mean, going into the game? Yeah, the we've, on it. we've, I mean, ever since, I mean, I can only speak since I've been here, we've worked on the zone every year since I've been here. And I know coaches, even when I played for him, we, we had a zone that we would work on for just in case. Obviously, he's a man-to-man -man, uh, basketball coach. He likes the accountability that comes with man-to-man. -man. But he's always been prepared with his own in case you need it for a variety of reasons. And obviously, we needed it last game because of the foul trouble, especially with Ashton having those four fouls. <clears throat> and the way they were driving the ball, um, we could not afford to have Ashton foul out of that game and it's probably what would have happened if we would have stayed in the man. Do you what think is, that well, the way that worked for you all says to Cal, hey, this is a, this is a good changeup for us, for this group of guys? He's always been, as long as I've been with him, played for him and worked for him, he's always been willing to go to the zone and kind of a, you know, break glass in kind of emergency situation. Now, he's going to go with the man to man at all costs until he sees that emergency situation. In the last game against Arkansas, we, we came upon one of those. You mentioned that the four fouls needing to handle that. What does he mean in your words? What does Ashton mean to the team? 
you know, we, we've got interchangeable parts, but if there's one guy that's indispensable, it would be him just because of how disruptive he is on the defensive end of the floor for the other team's offense and how much he means to our offense and his ability to, to make shots for himself, but probably more importantly, how easy he makes the game at, some, at, at times for the other guys on the floor, whether it's getting Tyrese or Emmanuel open shots or Johnny open shots, getting Keon Khalil open shots, or then finding Nick and EJ for lobs, uh, Nate for open shots. You know, we, we don't have a lot of guys like him that see the game in that way with the ball in their hands where they can create one-on-one -on -one and beat their man and then has the vision to see the other nine guys on the floor. That's a special attribute that he has. Cal's talked about whoever rebounds is going to get plenty of time. Johnny Juzang has, when he's been healthy and been able to play, has obviously been able to rebound. Has he given you more confidence to maybe be able to spell those top three guys a little more? Absolutely. It's why he got the minutes he got the last game based on what he did at South Carolina. He getting those five rebounds in very limited minutes. You know, unfortunately for Johnny, he got sick. Now he's back healthy, and he's earning the right to play. And that's one of the things that you've always had to do for coach is you've had to earn the right. Nothing's ever been given for him, and Johnny's starting to earn the right to get more minutes. He, uh, Ashton, said uh, uh, that playing against Georgia, you know, he gets juiced about that. Do you guys, you know, talk to him about not getting too juiced? No. No, that's part of his edge. I mean, he's got a competitive spirit. Um, like no other, regardless of who we, who we play. I mean, he's always going to come on the floor with that same edge. And I don't think it's any different just because it's Georgia. But obviously, being from there, it's not going to raise him any, any higher than he already gets on that court. Tony, normally when Cal gets agitated, you guys are there to kind of hold him back. What was going through your mind when he got tossed? Um, I really don't remember. I don't remember. I mean, it was just such an a, emotional moment. They were making a run. Um, the whistles might not have been going our way at that time, and it uh, seems like the situation just got a little out of hand. Has Cal come to the realization that you guys were fouling a lot? I don't know. You'd have to ask him. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any differences in Georgia between the first time you played them and this time? Not, not really. I mean, they're doing like all of us. We evolve through the course of a season, and, uh, and they've been no different when you watch them play. They're doing some different things on defense. They're doing some different things on offense, um, but obviously with Edwards on the floor, you know, he makes them different because they've got a guy that's capable of going for 40 at any, at any moment. So you've got to pay a lot of attention to him, but then they're dangerous in other places. I mean, Hammonds is one of the best big guys in the, in the league. Um, Crump um, is, a, is an experienced guard that makes shots, that can make threes, multiple threes in a game. The Wheeler kid has made a big difference. He's really gotten more comfortable now on this level and his ability to affect the game with his speed. And he bothered us the first time down at Georgia. So, I mean, they presented a lot of different challenges. But like every team this time of the year, you're evolving constantly. What makes uh, Edwards so productive? He can score on all three levels efficiently. I mean, he can pull up from 30, bring the ball up the floor, and make it at a high percentage. He can isolate you, um, go in either direction, left hand, right hand and make hard shots look really easy. I mean, obviously, we've had a bunch of those guys over the years here that, you know, they're special players for that reason. They make the game look easy, and the game becomes easy for him. And then they're doing a lot of stuff with Edwards now to get him in the post because he is such a physical, strong, athletic guard who can create a lot of mismatches down on that block, and he's a good passer. So, you know, it's, it's, he's one of those guys that he demands a lot of attention when you're preparing to play them. They didn't quickly guard him the first time. That's... Everybody did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Emmanuel did, Tyrese did, um, quickly did, Ashton did. So every Khalil did. Everybody was on him. He's well, you don't want to give him a steady diet of one guy because he can figure figure that out pretty pretty easy. And that's what a special player does. There hasn't been a whole lot of size in some of these early matchups. Georgia's a team that not really big up front. How do you exploit that more consistently? And there's some things that we've been working on. I mean, we worked on it for again switching defenses, teams with smaller players. We try to take advantage of that against Arkansas, and I think you saw some of that. They they got Nick late to got Nick to the foul line late in the game when we were exploiting when they tried to switch smaller matchups on them. So just some things that we're going to keep working on. Over the previous two years, could you have imagined a time where you're in a crazy environment on the road and it's crunch time and you're drawing up offense for Nick Richards when you're saying <laughs> you're going to be our go-to guy? Here? I mean. No, because he probably wasn't in the game at at that point, but. He's evolved. He's a, he's a totally different person. He's a totally different player. 
and it's it's neat to see it come together um, for Nick at this at this point. It's obviously good for us, but you know everybody, you know we've had, I've always said it, we've had so many uh, uncommon freshmen here that made the game look easy, um, and Nick was, is a tip is a typical player who's evolved from his freshman year, sophomore year, now as a junior year, you just don't see that very often, especially around here. That is, everybody's not doesn't come in here ready made, ready to hit the road, and ready to dominate. And even and because he was a late starter to the game anyway, coming to basketball until he was 13, 14, 15, it hasn't been natural for him. But he's worked hard, he studied hard, and now he's reaping the rewards, and so are we. Yeah, like yeah, just, oh, go ahead. Like and stuff, well, he's on that same progression as Nick, so to speak. But it went unnoticed in that game how good of a job EJ did on 33. I mean, he, I think the game before our game, he might have had 30, 30 something points coming in the game before our game. Um, and EJ single handedly made the game difficult on him because of his size and his ability to move the feet. And you're not going to get a lot of cre uh, credit externally about how good you are defensively. It's usually the highlight offensive plays that get all the credit. But EJ deserves a lot of credit in what happened in an Arkansas game and what he was able to do to 33. One or two more guys. One other thing about the fouling. You guys have emphasized toughness, competitive spirit. Is that something, that, is that a contributing factor in that it just, you know, needs to be refined to compete without fouling? Yeah, it's the nature of our practices. I mean, it's just, <clears throat> we've had a lot of competitive teams around here with competitive individuals, and this year is no different. And we've got to try to regulate it in practice so it doesn't carry over. That, that competitive spirit kind of goes over the top sometimes because I want to stop my guy, and that turns into fouling. And so the more we can do that in practice, the better we'll become defensively, even though we are one of the elite defensive teams in the country. Anything else, guys? All right. Thanks, All right. Thanks guys.